Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to another Mortal Kombat video. Now, unlike my normal videos, where I talk about lore and usually break down something that's narrative-based, today I'll be analysing the trailer for the most recent Mortal Kombat animated movie, that of course being Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. Now, I believe it's definitely worth mentioning here, but I will be breaking all of this down frame by frame, so I may in turn spoil some aspects of the film you will be interested in. If you are okay with that, please continue to watch. However, if you wish to go in with no spoilers in mind, I do recommend you probably click off this video. But without any further ado, let's get started. Now, as I've said in previous videos discussing this topic, this movie will serve as both an origin story for Scorpion and also as a way of retelling the events of the first tournament. But of course, they do have their own narrative spin on it. Now, the first frame we see in the trailer is a very old Chinese junk ship, obviously showing the transport that one must undergo in order to travel to the Mortal Kombat tournament. Now it's here where the shot transitions and shows off a rather jagged and barren wasteland, seemingly being where Shang Tsung's island is hidden, as we do see this area once again. Now after this we do get some action shots, one of Scorpion swinging his kunai and chain in combat, and another being a fight scene between Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Now one thing that is worth mentioning here is that both characters are in their MKX costumes. Now though this doesn't affect the film from a narrative standpoint, I do believe that by us picking up on this design choice, it may in fact show how long this film has been in development. As we do know that for many years now, Warner Brothers has struggled to put together a movie, or even an animated movie for that matter. So this film may have been going on for many years behind the scenes. Now another thing worth noting about the Scorpion and Sub-Zero fight sequence, is that it actually looks like they're fighting above the pit. And again, I wish for us to focus on the backwards terrain, showing that yes, this is definitely on Shang Tsung's island. Now our next two shots here are between Kano and Sonya Blade, as the two are seemingly battling each other in some kind of torture chamber, with a torture rack being behind Kano and beneath them being some kind of lava. Now there's not really a lot of information to go off here, but I believe it's a safe assumption to make that this is more than likely lower levels of Shang Tsung's temple. And talking about temples, our next shot here is five monks walking up some staircases alongside Raiden and what I presume is Liu Kang, at least judging by the red attire. Now here it does look like they are walking to Shang Tsung's temple. The Earthrealm defenders all arrived at the island separately, as we don't see the Earthrealm trio alongside each other till later. So it may play on the narrative of everyone being there for their own separate reasons. Liu Kang with assistance from Raiden to of course save Earthrealm, Johnny Cage to more than likely prove that he is legit movie star, and Sonya going after Kano as it's always been a narrative driven thing that he had killed her previous partner. Now of course we do get our first shot at Raiden, but what's rather interesting here is that his costume design seems to be a blend of aspects from MK9, as well as some of the patterns patterns and colour schemes he did have from MKX, so it is something a tad bit new. Now here we cut to the inside of a grand hall, to which we get our first look at the older iteration of Shang Tsung, to which he does have his MK9 design. Now unlike what the games do, where the group of fighters participating are usually people we can recognise, it really does seem like here they wanted to go all out and show how large the scope of this battle will be. So there are various different fighters in this shot here that I have never seen before, however I I can see some of the monks we saw earlier walking up alongside Raiden and Liu Kang, so this must be a grand feast after everyone arrives at the tournament. We again get another group shot, showing off a handful of fighters, including some races that I've never seen before in the Mortal Kombat universe. Now of course we do have a Tarkatan on the left hand side, but the two in the centre are individuals I'm not familiar with. Judging by their design, it's definitely medieval fantasy, I highly doubt they'll play a role in the story, but it's interesting to see new races in the universe. Another Another thing worth pointing out, there is a lizard man in the bottom right corner, possibly implying one of the two chameleons, or maybe Reptile isn't the last Saurian here. I absolutely could be looking into this just a tad bit too deep, but again definitely something worth pointing out here. We then get our first proper group shot of Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade and Liu Kang, with Johnny Cage having a rather different take on his MK9 costume, as it's seen in the first chapter where he does have a suit, however the colour palette is slightly different, but Cage still is seemingly Cage. And of course Sonya herself is in her MKX design, as well as that of Liu Kang. Now it's from here where we get some shots from Shang Tsung and Raiden, as well as Earthrealm and the Neverrealm, to which I believe is discussing and showing the stakes of the tournament to fighters that might be naive to it, aka Johnny Cage. But one thing that's extremely interesting about this Neverrealm shot is the lone fighter that we can see amongst the demons, and if you can't notice that is a chain in hand, more or less solidifying that this is Hanzo Hisashi, so this shows off the pre 
prequel aspect to the film, as well as giving us our first shot of what happened to Hanzo Hisashi after he perished. Now what's interesting about this shot is that it immediately transitions from Hanzo to Scorpion, again implying the change of character. And when we slowly zoom out, we get to see Scorpion going up against Liu Kang, with this presumably going on during the later half of the tournament. But I do want to point out one thing that many may have missed in the trailer, and that is what's going on in the background. As we can see, there's Raiden on the left-hand side, Shang Tsung in the dead center, and an individual being held up in the air by Hellfire. And if we look at his overall design, that is in fact Quan Chi. And later on in the trailer, we do see Scorpion battling Quan Chi, possibly learning of the ruse that was presented before him when Quan Chi organized the massacre of the Shira Ryu. So I'm going to make the assumption here that Scorpion came to this realization far earlier than his other counterparts and is making Quan Chi pay for it. Now our next very brief shots go over Liu Kang and more or less solidify his position as hero of the story. We then get a very quick shot here of Kitana, meaning that she will be present in this story as well. Up to what extent we don't quite know, but she may in fact have a very small role to play, like in the first tournament for MK9, as she can be seen attacking Liu Kang. We then cut away to our next shot of Reptile uncloaking as he battles Sonya Blade and a shot of lightning within Earthrealm. This isn't anywhere near Shang Tsung's island, so this may happen during the earlier part of the film. Now as we go on to our next shot, we see a traumatized Hanzo Hasashi being approached by Quan Chi. Now this is without a doubt when Quan Chi approaches Hanzo and offers him the opportunity for revenge against Sub-Zero and the Lin Kuei, something which he does inevitably take. Now a fantastic shot here that is very very brief is seemingly in the home of the Shira Ryu while Hanzo is running away from the Lin Kuei with a young individual wrapped around his neck. Now if you watched my previous video where I talk about the cast and who will be playing who, I can more or less confirm that the young individual around his neck is in fact his son Jubei, though we will visually see the fall of the Shira Ryu. We then of course cut away to Sub-Zero and then back to Hanzo which is framed in a very interesting manner. The reason I say this is because the background behind him is pure red and we can visibly see tears in his eyes. The representation and use of colour here, as well as the expression in the face, implies that he's just suffered from a great loss. So Jubei may have just possibly died in this scene, as the next cut we do have is one of sheer rage from Hanzo, and you can see the reflection of a Lin Kuei ninja on the blade. Now here are where things pick up. Scorpion is seemingly battling Quan Chi, and has been somewhat injured in the abdomen, which may imply that possibly after Scorpion had killed Sub-Zero, Quan Chi saw no use for him. But the Spectre proved to be too much, and a fight broke out, which led up to what we saw in the tournament earlier, where Quan Chi was unconscious and captured. Now of course we do see a few more action oriented shots, and Scorpion defeating Quan Chi in what seems to be a ruined temple. From here we cut to Raiden, and get a few shots of his godlike ability, as he's moving as quick as the speed of light, and brings down a lightning strike in what I presume is a fight between Goro and another Earthrealmer. We then get a glimpse of Liu Kang, where there's sparks and fire, so I'm presuming this is his fight with Scorpion, and if we freeze the frame just about right, we can actually see him perform a flying dragon kick on Goro. We then cut to Sub-Zero, who does have a few action oriented shots here against Scorpion, nothing too too special for the most part, but he's able to react to Scorpion's teleport and seemingly punish him for it. Our next shot is rather interesting, as it does cut to Sonya Blade, however unlike the previous shots we've seen, it looks like here we aren't actually at the tournament, but instead in some Asian district, which he's fighting a criminal and easily manhandles him. We then cut to the cocky actor Johnny Cage, and again, if we freeze the frame just about right, we can see an injured Sonya Blade in the right corner. Now judging by this terrain, I'm going to presume it's after she's battled Kano, as earlier it looked like they were battling in a torture chamber, and this area in itself does look like a dungeon, so I'm willing to bet that this is the aftermath of that battle. We get a few more action oriented shots here of Johnny just beating the absolute crap out of everyone. And finally, we finish off the trailer with a very sinister shot of Goro against a sleeveless individual. I do have the suspicion and belief that this is Jax. Judging by the attire, it's military slash special forces, and Jax over the course of history has had different ways of having his arms be removed. And with Ermac seemingly not present in this tournament, Goro could indeed be the individual that crushes his arms. And of course, how could I forget, we finish off the trailer with Scorpion 
between doing what he does best and that is murdering some Lin Kuei scum. Now due to the lighting here, as well as a Lin Kuei member just seemingly being a lackey, I'm going to presume this is before the tournament, where he's actively seeking out b -Han. But that covers just about everything I needed to in this trailer. I hope you have enjoyed this and have come away learning more. There's actually quite a bit that does go on in this trailer here, so this frame by frame analysis may give you a rough gist of what we could see. So far, I'm still very very excited for this movie, however I do wish that the trailer was a little bit more violent, as it is Mortal Kombat, but I understand that they don't want to show too much before the movie's release, of which we are still yet to get a date. But yes, I hope you have enjoyed this video and come away learning more. What are your thoughts on this animated movie so far, and which character are you excited to see in action? Please do comment down below, and as always before this video wraps up, if possible let's try getting it to about 500 likes, as it's a great way of supporting this channel. And of course, don't forget to take that bell and subscribe as it will notify you when I do upload more content. But that's everything I did want to say for now. So as always, please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I will see you all next time.